Are you ready? <laughs> I'm so tired, I want to cry. That's how tired I am. The beautiful Mrs. Melanin, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. She has brought all of <laughs> the swag, all of the beauty and glory, as she always does. But mm -hmm. this time, it's a mm -hmm. little bit extra. <laughs> I feel like I have to comment on it. Thanks, babe. Because it was so expensive. <laughs> Hello, I am Mrs. Melanin. And I am Belief Mel. And we're here with episode 47 of How, How Married, Married Are, are you? you? Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys. So, um... I'm Yvette, and this is Glenn. Yes. And we are married. Yeah, we've been married for nine years. Nine years. And we uh, usually do podcasts on Thursdays. How married are you? We come up with topical conversations, and we kind of talk about just the real, authentic like thoughts that we're having as a married couple. But, um, yeah, on Tuesdays, we wanted to give you guys a you know, an opportunity to kind of have us res to respond to some of the things that you may be going through uh, as a single person hoping to be married one day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we are not here to judge you or mm -hmm. make fun of your situation. Um, I might smirk <laughs> like I did last time. I might chuckle, but that's because of my own issues because I'm trash recycled. Uh <laughs> <laughs> today uh let's do a chocolate baby story time yes how about that mm -hmm. all right it's chocolate baby story time all right chocolate baby story time for me i don't think we talked about this yet about anaya and how she started to have really bad jealousy issues with uzi lately do you think it's jealousy? Ah, it must be. Okay. It must be because um, she's used to being an only baby. She's been like looking at your boobs a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And kind of interested there. Uh, uh, she has been, you know, just kind of like, you know, wondering like where she's going to be. And so every time Uzi would move away mm -hmm. from you. She sits in my lap. You know, uh, well, I would take Uzi or you put him down. She sits in your lap. Mm -hmm. um, she's just been super grumpy. It was like maybe two days, but I feel like we're going to see this reoccurring mm -hmm. for a while until she kind of gets over it and realizes that we love her differently now. Um, Do we love her differently? Well, she's not the baby anymore. You know, we can't carry her all the time. Yeah, true. You know, um, but she, she takes a while to come out of her funk. Yeah. She reminds oh me my a lot gosh. of Uriah. <laughs> That's why I think they're really going to be best friends. Because they're so much alike. Yeah. Maybe. You might be right there. Mm -hmm. What about you? So today we had photos that we were supposed to be taking as a family. And um, so I really wanted Theo to get a man bun done. I'm so sorry. I'm so tired. Me too, yo. We tired, <laughs> y'all. We had homeschool. Eva did homeschool today. The nanny came through. I had a shoot with Dom for a product. I had to edit. The electrician came over, put new lights up in here, and a fan installed. So it was all of that. And then we had a second photo shoot for a product. And then we had a family photo shoot at the beach. And it was like three wardrobe changes. And we started the whole thirty today. And we started the whole. 30 Which I wasn't today. gonna tell nobody. Just yeah. in case I fail, but but you want a reason to be as angry as you are. <laughs> yes, I'm not angry. I'm just really like my thoughts are not all there. Anyways, he got the man bun. The guy, um, the photographer and Glenn decided that you know maybe it's not that great, and so we just we we're gonna put his hair back down. But then the photographer was like, well, let's just keep it up and get a couple of shots with it, and then take it down, you know, midway through the shoot. And so we were gonna do that. And then later on, Theo got super emotional with me. And he's like, Mom, I look like a girl. And I was like, what? And so immediately I let him take the bun down because I didn't want him to feel a certain kind of way. But at the same time, when his hair was down, 
you look more like a girl at like with the hair you know anyways i don't want him to hear this one day and be like you have me looking like a girl but he said only you and grandma wear your hair like this mm. that's the only like he's only seen grandma and me wear our hair up like that and so that's why he thinks it's a girl hairstyle and i mm. thought that was just so interesting that is very interesting but then i tried to remind him that uncle john used to wear his hair up like that too mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i don't know what to say about that i don't either i was just sharing to share i didn't really want you to respond but i didn't get a chance to tell you mm -hmm. okay so yeah yeah so let's hop into these words of affirmation we have words of affirmation words of affirmation <laughs> Yo, I'm so sorry. Listen, words of affirmation is when people call in and tell us how much they love what we do. It keeps us going. It helps us move forward. Uh, and it's just a little minute session that you can just call in to our Google number, which you bet is going to pull up because she's on top of everything. Or you can leave us a DM via Instagram on the How Married Are You instagram when you talk communicate to us don't send it to us personally send it to the how married are you instagram which is how married are you you know um and so or you can also leave it on the anchor app or at the bottom of the uh the the, the, the description the show notes the show notes if you the bottom of the show notes you can get through uh you you'll see a link that says you know leave a voicemail voice message and we'd love to hear your voice uh we just love to know how you uh appreciate what we do and also you can leave a five-star rating if you don't like to talk on whatever podcast platform you like listening to this podcast on or you can subscribe to our youtube channel which is how married are you podcast this is how married are you how married are you how married are you and that is nice <laughs> i thought you were gonna say that's just how married you are. <laughs> i mean i feel high i think we're so tired for delivery. yeah okay let's keep okay. going but i did have that phone number if y'all want it 760-335-6643 again our google voicemail number is 760-335-6643 all right, so now we're going to get into these words of affirmation. What we're going to do right here is go back. Hey, Eva and Belief, I just wanted to say thank you guys and send you guys some words of affirmation. I really enjoyed your last podcast um, in which you guys were kind of mad at each other, but you couldn't really tell because you guys were still persevering through it. Um, Belief was saying how he was allergic to heights and then... It don't stop. It's to the beat, y'all. It don't stop. A freak freak, y'all. It don't stop. It's to the beat, y'all. It don't stop. Belief was saying how he was allergic to heights and then... <laughs> Then I see an Instagram post that you guys went hiking. You guys are the bomb. But this last um, one that you guys just recorded um, was just really hit home because I feel like I complicate things um, and asking God for confirmation. Um, but th the takeaway I got from it was God really wants to give us the desires of our hearts. And as long as we are obedient to him and do this do that relationship like do life together for his glory is what he really cares about all right y'all um so we actually do have a voicemail that is a um that is a dilemma do you want to listen to the voicemail you want to listen to it yeah let's listen so to how it do i or how are you gonna okay hi uh this is i'm just asking about marital advice because me and my husband are right now deciding whether or not we want to have another child. Currently we have two and we're deciding on a third. We only have two boys and we're deciding on whether or not um, we're ready for another child because I had a hard trimester with my second born. So I'm deciding when is the best time to decide to have another child? Thank you for answering my question. Bye. You should edit out her name at least. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to disguise her voice. That that I will edit. Um, hi. <laughs> I don't think I'm the right person. I know. 
I was going to say the same thing. I was like, I don't know if this is a good question to ask us. Have you been listening to the podcast? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think, I, you know, I don't know. I think that it's not really about the Being right re- time. Ready, yeah. You know, it's it's like, you know, are you willing to invest? Mm. And I think if you guys both have open hearts and you're willing to make that investment and when i say investment i don't mean money i'm talking about time and attention and um care uh it sounds like you're not at capacity yeah if you're considering if you're considering it you know and i i prefer the sooner the better yeah but you know some people will be setting up they'll be like yeah i'm gonna have another kid when my other kid turns 10 so they can help me watch the kid you know what i'm saying like it depends on what's best for your situation yeah Uh, we kind of wanted to have ours close together Mm -hmm. so we can have a season of being parents oh we're always gonna be parents but Mm -hmm. have have a season of like having small kids and then having older kids and they're all just kind of old together um so i think that's kind of up to you i don't know if we can tell you when the right time for you to have kids is that's really a personal decision Mm -hmm. just gotta kind of trust your gut um i say definitely make sure that your tribe is ready (laughs) uh you know um if grandma is sitting there like i y'all got all these kids around here and your brother got a kid and your (laughs) sister got a kid and all that type of stuff like you know think about the people who are going to be around the people you're going to be able to lean on and stuff like that i don't think that's a reason not to have another kid though i know but as soon as john have a kid <laughs> then we're screwed so but our kids will be older who knows with that guy <laughs> uh shout out to anthony o'neill <laughs> we see you <laughs> what? so uh i love john i love okay. both, both my, all my brothers-in-laws oh, um okay. But yeah, man, like I, I don't I think it's kinda up to you. What do you think, babe? Yeah, I think that was all good stuff. I think that if you guys are talking about it and you both are on the same page, then definitely it's probably the right time. Yeah. Um I think that is something to consider as far as the village, like where you are and who you're gonna be able to lean on during those early days. Um, but I don't think that that's like a make it or break it. Right. So yeah. There you have it. There's our two cents. Okay. Okay. So y'all don't really like to send in the um, voicemails. A lot of the voicemails we're getting are words of affirmation or encouragement or advice or feedback on. Yeah, you guys situations. are giving us advice, <laughs> which is kind of like, thank you. We do appreciate your we take do. on, you know, what we go through. I think some people think we're in more dire need than we are sometimes because mm-hmm. I can tend to be heavy on the dramatic Ex- side. I don't like it when you agree with me and I'm already like saying something about myself. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like lately I've been saying, Hey, I'm gonna go for a run. And you've been like, really? Yay. And stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? You've been extra. Babe, that was to encourage you. What? I don't like it. I would love to be able to go for a run by myself without a stroller. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, um, Let's move on. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I was saying that I was saying that we aren't getting a lot of voicemails about like asking for our feedback. We're getting mostly emails. So here goes me reading again, y'all. Here we go. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. I didn't read this one before. <laughs> Why don't you just do one you already read? Because it's going to take time. I think to this one's it? interesting though. Let's okay, just let's read see. it. Let's see what happens here. Okay. <laughs> Dear Glenn and Yvette, I love watching y'all on YouTube and listening to your podcast. Thank you so much for showing a positive black family. Your family is truly blessed. Thank you. Please bear with me as my English is not my first language. I would like to hear y'all advice on my situation. Oh, I did read this one. Sorry. I lied. Me and my now ex-boyfriend have been together 10 years now. We have been together for 10 years now. We are now in a weird space where we support each other emotionally, but aren't together for now. We have been together since high school. I am 29 and my ex is 33. We have worked hard together to finally buy a house together. He has finished uni, which I'm assuming is university, and has recently found a stable full-time job. And I'm almost done in uni three weeks to go. Wait, can I interject? Yeah. She says she had an ex-boyfriend that she's going to buy a house with. 
right. I read this one. Just making sure. Okay. You got to stop laughing. Okay. I'm not laughing. Am I? You smiling funny. <laughs> Go ahead. It's just, anyways, it's interesting. So we were planning to, we were planning on getting married as soon as I finished uni, find a full time job, and move into. Okay, so they were ex boyfriend and girlfriend, but they got they're back together now. Got it. So me, so they're currently ex boyfriend and girlfriend, but they were together for ten years. Ooh, wow, that's a long time. Up until buying this house. Oh, so mm. bought the house? Come, oh, I'm sorry. I, I. Oh my God. <laughs> Hold go on. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Okay. So we were planning on getting married as soon as I finished uni, find a full time job, and move in the house we bought. The house is still being built, and we will be finished in eight months. And it will be finished in eight months after signing all the documents at the notary. My ex started acting strange. He wanted time to think and work on himself. It all seemed like a rush decision as this came out of the blue to me. He said he didn't want to repeat the cycle of his family and be dishonest. There has been a lot of cheating he has witnessed as a teenager and his family from his father. He wanted to break and go into therapy for this all as for what he wanted to break and go into therapy for this all. As his family swept their disloyalty problems under the rug, his parents are still married after all this and have never talked about it. Even though I felt hurt, he came with this after signing everything at the notary. I told him I was proud of him for tackling his problem now so it wouldn't be a problem in our relationship. He decided he needed some distance. I was truly heartbroken as I did not understand where this was coming from all of a sudden, but he wanted some time and I had to give him space. I asked him about going to a therapist and he just said he needed more space and tackle his problem as a grown man. So I did give him more space and didn't contact him as often. He asked me to just text and no phone calls. After two weeks, I noticed he was talking more often to me through text and begged for my forgiveness, but he said he made a terrible mistake. I did not understand what he meant as he got his space for just 14 days. In the third week, I suggested that we just meet to talk. Then he told me what all this was about. He wanted to see what a one night stand was like since he had never had one and thought about and thought he was missing out on this experience. He met up with another woman through a dating app for sex, but he did so unprotected. This woman is now pregnant with his child and is truly happy about it. After 14 days? No judgment. Well, we can judge him, I guess. I'm judging her, the girl who's pregnant. Oh, she's happy. She wanted a baby. She's pregnant. She don't care who the daddy is. Uh, Where are we at? This woman is now pregnant with a child and is truly happy about it. That's all she has ever wanted, she said. My ex is horrified and doesn't want this child, but almost knows for sure it's his because he had unprotected sex and the conception date matches. He will do a paternity test when the child is born. I am heartbroken and can't see why this all happened and why to me. We worked really hard to get where we are and we're just counting down our struggle days. And we're just counting down our struggle days. He is now begging me for forgiveness and wants to build a life together. But I'm hurt over him having a baby on me with someone else. Even though I love kids and want kids of my own in the future, I didn't want kids now. I also didn't make plans for this child he had on me. Even though I'm sure I would love this child, I was furious for a short while. But I'm now just hurt and thinking of taking him back. Even though he has hurt me and everyone around me is upset, I have forgiven him already. We still talk without conflict and are looking for a way to go on. I just feel he has given his most valued possession, his seed, to someone else. He has invested in someone else. That hurts and makes me feel cheated. He did this after our investments and commitments to each other. I want to take at least, I want to at least take some time for myself. Have him buy me out of the house we bought so I can find somewhere to stay for a year. 
and see how I feel in a year, but really miss him and want him around. It feels like I am missing an arm. My ex has always been kind, loving, and amazing to me and everyone around him. He told his family and friends and everyone is just shocked as he is not the type of person to normally do these kinds of things. He truly made a huge mistake, one of with one with a lot of consequences. I'm considering getting back with him to and accepting this child. I know I would love the child as soon as I meet him or her, but also feel like he has cheated on me out of having our dream picture. Now I owe and but I also feel like he has cheated me out of having our dream picture now that he has brought others into our relationship. He really regrets his decisions and begs for forgiveness and is now in therapy. Should I give him a chance and try to work things out? Thank you for reading my email. Hope the story is clear enough. Please don't publish my name. Of course not. <laughs> but please share your thoughts on the podcast if suitable. Greetings from Europe. Woo child. That's a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. I'm not as tired as I was though. That was a roller coaster. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Here I don't go. even know. Like my first thing is like my first thing is and I don't know if if I'm allowed to say this but don't buy a house with someone that you're not married to. Yeah, you shouldn't buy a house that is a until huge... after a year of being married. You got to like you got to live together, experience each other. You expect him to do the lawn, the the lawn. He's expecting you to do the laundry. Both of y'all expectations is all out of whack. And you got a mortgage to cover. <laughs> you don't even know if you like where you stay at. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. I don't know if I agree with that, but okay. All right, cool. Okay, cool. go ahead. Let's let's put yourself in her shoes now. This is me you're talking about. Uh-huh. All right? Okay, so, wait. Where are we going with this? So let's say it's me. Mm-hmm. Say if, you know, you knew you was going to get all this. You know what I'm saying? me i understand who this is all right just making sure you know so you're gonna get all this Mm -hmm. but it comes with me cheating on you and getting a woman pregnant what do you think wait are we married we're not married i'm not talking about now i'm talking about like put yourself in her shoes well okay we've been together for 10 years first of all well, I guess they're young. I'm about to say, like, how you be together how for young, 10 how young years? Are they? Huh? How young are they? They're um, 29 and 33. Actually, they that's that our young, age. man. They ain't young. <laughs> Y'all ain't young. <laughs> I'm 32. Go ahead. Wait, am I 32? I was I born know. in 1987. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm 32. 32. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So, me personally, I don't think that I would continue with that relationship Mm -hmm. just that's my first take on it but i also don't have the history and all that stuff um my whole thing though is 10 years is a long time to be in a relationship and not have you know like moved toward marriage yet Mm -hmm. but i understand you guys were in school and stuff so i understand that but yeah 10 years is is a lot of time to love someone and be in a relationship and then for them to do something really like the thing that really bothers me is he thought he was missing out on something. Mm-hmm. So he wanted to try out a one night stand. I'd be like, go get you a whole bunch of nightstands because I'm I'm gone. Mm-hmm. I think I'd be gone. I'm so sorry. I don't want it to be that simple because I know it's not that simple and you really can't say what you would do until you're in this situation. But my first inclination is flight. Mm. It's not to fight. Mm. Especially, ooh, I might, y'all probably are like, ooh, that sucks. And I, this is no diss to anyone who has a child and is looking for love. But I don't, I don't know personally if I could be that person. To like go into a relationship with someone who has a child? Really? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you bougie. It's not bougie. It's just I know myself. Yeah, you trying to adopt some kids? 
It's a different situation. Why is it a different situation? I don't know. We'll handle that later. It's yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I know that's it's a, a lot. lot of responsibility because you're not only accepting the child. Maybe if the mom was deceased, dang, dang. <laughs> baby mama gotta be dead. Am I digging myself into a hole? You y'all sleepy? Don't. She drunk, y'all. Forgive this woman. <laughs> There's Listen, no guys. filter. Listen, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like, when you, I've seen too many relationships where the man has had a child, and then the woman who goes into relationship with him has to deal with the other spouse that's stressful and i don't have time for all that stress i'm trying to live um i think that there is it's like that's understandable um that she would be reluctant how do we turn down my mic so i think you're turning on your headphones right now yeah that's what i meant to say yeah so i think what's happening is um you know she's clouded by all of the feels and the consistency and love of everything she's experienced with this man and it's not so much like she's blinded by it but it's something that she sees first which is beautiful um however like i would tell myself or anybody else in a situation protect your life the reason why i say this is because there is that you are so valuable that like I'm not saying you shouldn't forgive him I'm just saying that Mm. he gonna have to do some major work Mm -hmm. and what happens when he's curious again full show I'm 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 more I'm more concerned with the fact that it was like I thought I was missing out on something yeah like I mean, I not understand that. Like, men have curiosities. Like, oh man, I wonder what it would be like, or whatever. What do you wonder? She's sloppy. We're not talking about me. We're talking about these people. Can you just let me finish a thought without you projecting your insecurities on me? Huh. Them big old eyelashes <laughs> on my wife, man. She's getting on my nerves. She kept rolling her eyes at me. I was like, I hope them joints just don't open anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just close. Um, yeah, so like, um, I think that men have a curious mind, like we go around like we're just curious, you know, and i i I think that like I have commitment issues, right, whenever I gotta sign a contract for for a business transaction, it takes me forever because I'm like, yo, what if this is the one? That's kind of like, we got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got to read through all that stuff. You got to go through that stuff. I hate signing paperwork. And choosing this house. It took forever. Mm-hmm. Like, all that stuff. Like, I understand. Mm-hmm. And when you in that, and when you in the middle of, like, I understand backing out of a house. But my man just backed out of a house and a relationship. He's like, wait a minute. I don't know if I really like the baseboards in here. Nor do I know if I'm ready to be with you f- forever, forever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think this is why, like, you do things in proper order, you know? Yeah. Um, and so if you're going to move in with somebody, move in with them. But when you go and buy and make an investment with someone, Mm -hmm. um, like that is a lot. And you don't want to put that stress on yourself or the people around you. So I know this is kind of like, duh, I know I shouldn't do that. But I feel like that is kind of the, the real loss here is that, um, you know, you invested, you know, things other than your heart you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um because your heart can be you know mended back together but your credit score that joint take a while to come back up you know what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) um Uh, i don't think it's for us to tell you whether or not you should be with yeah you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. because i know relationships where the forgiveness is just like yo you know i know this is you i'm gonna I trust you. I love you. I know you. You're sorry. You're apologetic. But for me, I'm watching this, and I'm gonna just tell you this: that's sloppy. I'm cool with people like this, but these people aren't on my team. Yeah. Because, like, I can't have that type of mistake happen again, and me be relying on you for my family and my future and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um. 
this just seems really sloppy that curiosity led him away from a 10 year relationship. Yeah. It seems interesting to me that you weren't enough and some people make mistakes, you know what I'm saying? And that's okay. But, and I'm wondering, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Finish your thought. Yeah. I'm just saying some people make mistakes and that's understandable. And there's a lot of grace there, but I do feel like, I feel like the mistake I don't know if it would have been that big of a deal if, if she didn't get pregnant. <laughs> I know. Like, would he? Would you ever have known? So this is what I'm wondering because she was bringing up that he's dealing with a past of um, where his dad was cheating, cheated on his mom or whatever, and like has a history of doing that, and they stayed in relationship, and he's like, I have to go to therapy for that. But I'm like, is that all? Like. Did he tell you that before or after he found out that this girl was pregnant? And is he using that now as a means to, like, convince you that he's working on himself and that you should get back together with him? Because, I don't know, it just seems a little bit too convenient. The timing's off. Yeah. And then my other thought was, um, my other thought was very similar to yours. Like, what if that paternity test comes back and he's not the father? Well, well, they because have, then yeah. I would be a lot more inclined to be like, okay, let's try to work this out. If you're really interested in working it out, because maybe, I don't know, maybe it just took 10 years for him to really show himself to you. Nah, I mean, if this dude's been a stand-up guy for 10 years, but if he's been cheating the whole time, it's the first yeah. time he got caught. My issue is, why are you telling me to text you? Yeah. That's weird, man. Like, why would you just, like, we've been talking, mm -hmm. spending days together. It's like, let's just go to, I need space. Let's just go to text. Mm -hmm. Like, this probably already happened. And the truth is, you can find, you can get a paternity test while the baby's yeah. still in the womb. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to wait till that baby come out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? See, who knows he got. Like, just go ahead and check. Right now, figure it out. Like, go through some type of program. They have um certain types of uh things that, that are pretty 99 percent accurate you can find out if this baby he can find out if this baby is his before the due date so you guys can figure this out right now um i do understand you feel betrayed i do understand you feel like you lost an arm i i sympathize with you and i'm so sorry this had to happen to you um i don't want you to believe that he's the only man out there yeah like, I feel like because there are a lot more women than there are men, I think women is just kind of like, man, he ain't that bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather be with this person than be alone. Or, And I just want you to have faith that it can be better than that. You know? What do you think? Am I tripping? No. I think that's very accurate. You can do better. Yeah, you can do better. And he, maybe he can do better. Like, he can find someone who's going to put up with that. You know what I mean? Like, right? What do you mean he can find someone who can put up with that? Just because she wouldn't put up with that means that that person's better? No, I'm not saying that she's not. I'm saying that, like. I don't even know how to scratch my eyes. He's not. I'm saying that he's kind of trash. You know what I'm saying? And a better thing for a situation is someone who's going to put up with that. You know? And I feel bad for judging them because I hate doing that. But I feel like we don't we don't make those type of moves. You know what I'm saying? And, like, if you make a mistake, like, I understand that. But to go ghost, mm -hmm. like... After buying a house with somebody after 10 years. Mm -hmm. And this is another reason why it's like it's really cool to not give away your whole hand to to someone who hasn't, you know, really invested in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like via a ring or something like that. You know. And, and I'm not saying that she's worse. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like he could do better for his situation because she's not good for him. Like mm -hmm. this woman is not good for this man. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like i feel like she can do better and her settling is worse than yeah her. i feel like at this point it would be a matter of settling like i don't know why i feel that way i don't know if i have enough 
background information to say that, but I do feel like if you were to stay in this relationship, for some reason, I feel like it would be settling. But again, I don't feel validated in saying that. Um, but I mean, like if you did this while we were dating, then what happens when we're married? So. We have to tell this person what to do. We do? Yeah. Okay, sweetheart. What I would do is I would definitely part ways. I, I, I say this. I say you're on the right track. I say definitely have them buy you out of the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, take some time for take yourself. Take some time for yourself. Spend a year. You know, come to Cali. Yeah, you're just about to finish school. You Like three weeks from when this was written. You know, so you're, you're kind of winning right now. So just go ahead and take your time and, you know, go somewhere and, you know, visit yourself, vacation, like get to know yourself a little bit um, and just enjoy your time. Take the time he said he wanted times time seven, like take more time um, and be open to love. And be open to like else. God, like not not even God, like sending you someone else, but like you just being in love with yourself enough to know your value. You know what I mean? Like, be open to loving yourself. I don't. I have a question. If this were Anaya, what advice would you give her? Hmm. I don't know. I would have way more stronger. Like, I would be like kind of cursing Anaya out for like. <laughs> Even asking. Like, just one, like, kind of like, why are you buying a house with, with this a- guy? <laughs> like, that, like, I would be all on her for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I mean, I definitely would, you know, take care of her and, you know what I'm saying? But I would, I wouldn't just be like, I, it's hard for me to just be like, leave him alone. He's like, he's done. Like, he's whatever. It's hard for me to say that because. I don't, I don't know. Like, I come from a family of that. Of what? Of, of like, my grandmother, like, my grandfather bringing babies home to my grandmother. Mm, yeah, I forgot about that. And I'm like, uh, like, how? what am I to say? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because you came from that. Okay, so what if the guy was Theo? Um, I'd probably curse him out. In a like very dad way, but it'd be like one of them old black man curse out like you're out here trying to you know what I'm saying like I just be kind of wilding on them. Mm-hmm. Still love them, mm-hmm. you know. We're we're all people oh, who yeah, fall short. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, I'm not, still love them. I'm not sitting here like I'm like this person. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's you know what I'm saying like I don't want to even seem like like what happened to this dude can't happen to me. And I know you about to wild out, but I'm not any better. Than anybody else you know what i'm saying but yeah. you got to be in a state of complete selfishness to just sit there and contemplate you know what i just want to get some strange like just some strange old you know what i'm saying like just random old whoever out there like you know how hard it is to have a one night stand for a guy how is that hard it's hard like like, how do you, like... Find a woman who's Find a willing. woman who's just, like, open. Like, I mean, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? She said it was an app. Oh, it's an app. Okay, well, then, cool. Well, then it's an app, then. <laughs> and that might not be hard, then. That's really Thanks convenient. for not saying the name of the app, because we don't want none of y'all to know. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I feel like... I feel like it's pretty selfish. And I just feel like it's it's very random and risky, you know? Uh, and I, th- I think, yeah. Yeah. It's a lack of value there. Yeah. You so, got to know your worth and he does too. Yeah. And taking him back right away ain't going to teach him your worth. Yeah. He's going to have to work really hard for it. Somebody would have to work really hard for it for me. You know what's funny about this is making me recall a conversation I had with a friend who was like, you know, we're all capable of cheating. And I used to think that that was false. Like, I'm not saying that I'm, like, trying to go out and cheat on you, mm-hmm. but I do think that we are all capable of that. Yeah. If someone... Because it's not like... I mean, it, it rarely happens like this. I want to have a one-night stand. Yeah. I'm downloading mm-hmm. the app. I'm only... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's more like, oh, he complimented me. 
Yeah, it's a lack of boundaries. Yeah. And oh, we just went out for coffee. Yeah. Oh, he's so nice. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, he got me this. It's just a gift. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, she tells me such and such, or she affirms my work, or, you know, um, she doesn't laugh at my ideas. You know what I mean? Like, that type mm-hmm. of consideration is very, it's like, you know, it's that 80 20, mm-hmm. you know? And so we're all capable of that. And so I don't want to look down on this situation yeah. and, you know, make it seem, but it's just, I think the, the hard part for me is that, you know, he abandoned you, mm-hmm. you know, and you were very patient and kind and loving and he knew that and, t- and he took advantage of you. Yeah. And I would hate to see that happen to you again, but like love is not enough. Love is not enough. Like there needs to be some common sense in your relationship. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's very good. That's very good right, point. Like, Love is not enough. There needs to be common sense. Mm-hmm. That's quotable. Yeah. So don't just bring your heart in a relationship. Bring your brain and know better. And yeah. Do better. Yeah. All right, babe. How married are you? I'm so married that I stay ready. You did stay ready. I'm saying that I stay ready. I'm not saying that I did. You know what you did. Babe, how married are you? The other night. Lord. <laughs> the other night mm-hmm. it was 11 o'clock we were both going to bed after a podcast mm-hmm. you notice ants mm. crawling all like thousands of ants mm-hmm. thousands and we had a small I don't know hole if you can say thousands but okay uh, we want to say millions there were <laughs> th- there were so many ants there was like a line going through the <laughs> carpet all the way to the kitchen it was and so i don't know how many. all these ants was like they were like you're hey, excuse you and all of them came y'all and i swear like it literally was a podcast episode because we i was, they weren't there before we started recording and then when we came out there was a ton of ants yeah, and it was and it was so many that they were like they were huddled around the oatmeal on the floor and they huddled around the, the plantain chips and huddled around. I was just like, man, we gotta. Sweet. And so Eva was like, babe, we gotta we gotta figure this out. And I don't like <laughs> she just commanded me to do it. She was like, yeah, do it before you go to bed. No. Okay, what did you say? Did I have Uzi or was Uzi waking up or something? Because I feel like I had to go tend to the baby. You thought you were gonna do it. And then I was going to come back and help, but you were like, I'll just take care of it. Oh, okay. I don't remember that at I all. I thought that's what your how married are you statement was going to be. I'm so married that I just took care of it and told her to go to sleep. I stayed up till 3 o'clock in the because morning. Because I know. Never mind. I'm not going to undercut. You know what? Your. You always got something to say. Go ahead and say what you got to say. I don't want to. I'm going to. Goodness be, gracious. And. No, I'm not finished. <laughs> oh. Ants were everywhere, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to go outside. There was a hole sleep. in the house. There was a hole on the side of the house next to the chimney. I had to go out, find out where the ants were coming, and I traced them all the way through the bark. I don't know. Can you say hole or gap? Was it a hole? I don't know what it was. I mean, I couldn't see it. I just know that the ants were going to the wall and coming on the other side. Uh-huh. So I had to put, and thank God we had this. It's like this insect repellent that you can put around the house. That stops them from getting through. So I put that down. I put some traps down. I sound like an old black dude who's like, yeah, what you got to do is you got to get this. And, so and nobody cares. Nobody cares. The point is you got to be answered. Yeah, well, I don't want y'all to care. Everybody's care. listening to this. Which first was, like, somebody else might be dealing I'm with sure, ants this summer. I'm sure, like, whoever is, li- I'm sure a lot of people just been like, okay, that's the end of the podcast. Well, goodbye, guys. No, 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 <laughs> no. Guys, listen. I had to, I had to sweep, babe. mop. I had to turn on the Roomba, the iRobot Roomba. Okay, babe. And then I went and to sleep. Oh, my gosh. You're so corny. And that's, that's just, just how, how married, married we are. are.